Land Boards presents Mailbag Friday The Engineer PA09 Crimper Tool Okay, I've already opened this up so I know what's in it. Kind of excited. Let's see if this solves our problem. Let's take a look here. Ah, the PA09 Engineer Tool. Hope I got that name right. Straight from Japan. Not cheap either, something like $45. Here's the eBay seller we bought the tool from. It took about two weeks and two or three days to get here. It came from Japan, from Kobe. Boy, I wish they'd put a pound of that Kobe beef in there. That would have been nice. All right, let's take it out of the bag here. Looks like it comes with silica sand for protecting it. Pause the Here's the other tool. The uh, PA, or excuse me, S SN28B. Bought it from Palalo somewhere around 30 bucks. I think you can buy it from China for a lot less. I don't think any of them work very well. Even the Palalo site says it can take some tweaking. Uh, they got people on their, on their site that can probably do it. I work with a guy that could do it. I just gotten a lot of bad crimps out of other people too so it's all right here's the labeling on the back and here's the tool right here PA09 comes in a nice package let's see how this sucker before we do that, it looks like the back folds out to some longer instructions here. I have to see if those are helpful. I saw a video up on the internet of how to use this tool. Apparently it's a two-step process, but the other one I have is such a piece of junk. Although it was cheaper, it was a piece of junk. We'll see if this one works better. I want to preserve the packaging. It looks like the only thing keeping the plastic front on from the back is that one staple there because it has these kind of fold over plastic edges on it. Definitely want to keep that packaging in good shape. Looks like it's some nice and straight. Here's a picture of the typical terminals. Although my terminal doesn't exactly look like any of those. And it did come out of the packaging, even without taking out the stapler, just by unfolding the one plastic edge and then lifting the crimp tool out. Let's get an initial impression of it here. Uh, I like the little arm. A little hard to do with one hand here for me. Let's switch hands and see how I can do better with my other hand. Uh, doesn't seem to... Maybe it's grabbing it. Oh yeah, there we go. Comes apart nicely. It's springy, but the spring isn't too heavy. Handle feels a little small for my, shall we say, western sized hand. Um, some nice marking there for sizes. Maybe that'll be helpful. And the uh, engineer PA09 number marked on it. Um, some tools, the spring is like way too strong. This definitely feels like quality Japanese tool though. It's got little uh, spots there maybe to hook it on a hook or something. I don't know. Definitely want to compare this to the tool DuPont crimping type tool we've been using. You can see the edges there. Uh, this is supposed to be a lot better machined tool. It'll be hard to get a good picture of it here. I'll have to get it over on the photography table and take a good look at it. See how good it looks. But initial impressions are good. Solid tool. Wow, I just did my first crimp and what a huge difference. This thing actually slid into the connector just like it should. Incredible. Took a little bit of time to figure it out. Watched a video and got an idea, but it was so quick it was hard to show. I'll try to get a video of how to do it. First you strip back the cable just like you normally would. The connector should be such that the wire part is in the front end and the insulation is in the back part. And This is a two-step crimp setup. 
the wire part gets crimped first. Let's take a closer look at the steps required to crimp the DuPont pins onto the cables. For the first step, use the 1.4 millimeter position of the tool to crimp the part of the wire, the connector that goes over the strip part of the wire, not the insulation part. The part of the connector that crimps over the insulation is bent, flared out at the sides and needs to be pinched down. That's what you use the front of the tool for, or a pair of pliers, but this works very well in this tool. The final step in the crimp is to use the 1.6 millimeter slot to crimp the insulation part of the, the part of the connector that goes over the insulation. There are some YouTube videos out there which go through these steps very quickly, but let's try to break it down and make it a little more easy to view. The pin in the connector will line up approximately as shown here. The back part of the connector, far left in this picture, goes over the insulation of the wire and the center part of the connector folds over the uninsulated, the strip back part of the wire. So the insulation should be stripped back about this far. So you can start by placing the pin into the crimp tool about uh, this depth with the uninsulated part sticking out. Note it's in the 1.4 millimeter position. Insert the wire into the pin. Make sure that the insulation is pretty much flush with the edge of the tool. Squeeze the compress the pin. Although this tool doesn't have a ratchet, it doesn't take that much force to compress it. Just some reasonable amount. At this point, the pin should look something like this. The wire should be retained in the middle, um, and the part where the insulation goes is not yet folded down. Use the flat edges at the front of the tool to squeeze the part of the pin that goes over the insulation to make the two sides more parallel. The last step is to crimp the part of the pin that goes over the insulation using the 1.6 millimeter position on the tool. Your crimp pin should end up looking something like this. Uh, this is probably the 15th or 20th maybe pin that I've crimped. So uh, the pins go into the plastic shells and you can hear a nice little tink sound when you get them in place properly. Here it is, uh, just started to slide in. You can see that it slides in fine with no interference in the back, no mechanical issues. And uh, here's after that beautiful little ting sound is produced. I'd like to record that. That's cool sound. With these steps, I was able to make quite a few cables today. And they all came together pretty nice on Mailbag Friday. If you want more information, you can see our wiki pages for these products. And we have YouTube videos on them as well. We have a store in Tindy where we sell all of these cards. Thanks for watching our video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.